So last week we talked about the RTX 3050 Ti Mobile, which was spotted in one of ASUS's upcoming Tough F15 laptops, and you can get more information about it from this video right here. Because right now I'd like to tell you that the non-TA variant, so this of course being the RTX 3050 mobile GPU, has also been spotted online and this time around in Geekbench together with the i5-11400H processor. So naturally it's time to look at what this GPU's specs are and also give you an idea of what you can expect in terms of performance. So this GPU is most likely going to have 2048 CUDA cores with 4 gigabytes of what I would expect to be GDDR6 memory and that's just because we've only seen GDDR6 and GDDR6X memory on the RTX 3000 GPUs but maybe Nvidia is going to change that hopefully not though but we can also probably expect that this GPU is going to be based on the G107 die and we don't really have much more information regarding this one aside from what we've also seen from the Geekbench results with the OpenCL benchmark of nearly 53,000 points, which is similar to what the AMD RX 5600M was capable of doing. Of course, don't let this information slide to you without keeping your salt shaker in hand, because we're probably going to have to wait for the official benchmarks to get an actually good idea of what this GPU is capable of doing. But in my opinion, if this card is going to be priced similar to what we've seen with the mobile 1650 and 1650 Ti cards, then you're actually going to get a really nice performance bump given that this GPU is obviously going to make use of DLSS as well, which and the games that actually support it will actually give you better frame rates. Now, I would also like to point out that I would have preferred to see at least 6 gigabytes of VRAM on this card, given that in some games like Doom Eternal, even at Ultra Nightmare um, at 1080p, that game is actually going to require that you have at least 6 gigabytes. So we're going to have to see how this card is actually going to perform whenever it's going to release, and I also don't expect Nvidia to magically bump its VRAM counts from 4 to 6, because we don't really expect them to do that, and obviously we've only seen them uh, putting more VRAM on the RTX 3060 and RTX 3090, but who knows, maybe this is actually going to change with the RTX 37 Ti and 3080 Ti, and if you'd like to learn more about these cards, then I'm going to have some videos about it uh, linked in the video description down below. But right now, I would also like to tell you that from Geekbench, we've also learned more about the probable performance of the 11800H, which would be Intel's upcoming 8-core 16-thread Tiger Lake H CPU, which so far seems to be able to get really close to the 5900H with its 1537 points in single-core and nearly 8400 points in multi-core. Now, this CPU is said to have a base of 2.3 GHz and an all-core turbo of 4.2 GHz and a one-core turbo boost of 4.6 GHz, which is really Really nice, but this is not to say that this is going to be their highest end mobile CPU, so you can expect to get actually some better performance out of their 11900H and their 11980HK processors. Now, speaking of the 11900H, this one is going to have a max one core boost of 4.9 GHz, and the 11980HK is going to top it all off with 5 GHz. Now, these CPUs are most likely going to go head to head against AMD's 50. 5900HX and the 5980HX and we're probably going to have to wait a little bit till we're going to get to the official benchmarks but not too long because Intel is planning to unveil their Tiger Lake H CPUs uh, or their higher end Tiger Lake H CPUs and by that I'm obviously talking about those with more than four cores and eight threads at GDC on March 18th. So Keep your eyes peeled if you're interested in getting more information about these ones because I'm generally interested to see what they're going to be able to do with the upcoming laptops because so far the laptops that they have released, well, let's just say that AMD's, um, well, AMD's chips have been much better in terms of performance. Now, if you'd like to get more information about that, then I'm also going to have a big playlist talking about um, all of the laptops which have released this year. So check out uh, the links right over here. And if you're not interested in mobile CPUs, then perhaps you'd like to learn more about Rocket Lake yet again. Because the good people at Video Cards have published an article leaking all the prices and specs of the entire 11th gen CPUs, so you can get an idea of whether they'll indeed rip your wallet apart or not. 
Intel will also have some refreshed 10th gen CPUs for the lower end, which seems to me like Intel is ready up to bring back some competition into the market space. Now, whether these CPUs will indeed be a better option for you, I'm not really sure, but I can recommend you go and read the Anantec preview and also the one from Hardwellux and other websites which have already gotten their hands on the 11700K so you can get an idea of what that CPU can do and have a base for all those things. And normally, I would also say wait for the benchmarks that are going to come out on the 30th of March because that way you're going to get the best possible information. And solely based on pricing, one might argue that Intel's upcoming CPUs might make a lot of sense and I was reading a few comments about it on Twitter but I'm also wondering how the community will react towards the other components that you might require for this CPU because you'll of course need a good motherboard and a good cooler for these chips including faster RAM. And this is not to say that with AMD's um, CPUs you're not going to need a better motherboard or faster RAM, but prices have certainly gone down for B450 motherboards and their coolers are generally better than Intel's, and with RAM, well, you're either way going to have to buy some RAM. Plus, Intel, or AMD rather, they might be very well able to slash prices, which I doubt Intel would be able to do with their upcoming CPUs at launch because that wouldn't make any sense and it's also worth pointing out that um, we are not going to be discussing about power limits, overclocking possibilities, sheer gaming performance versus productivity in this video but those are obviously things to consider as well but given that I don't have all the time in the world to discuss about those things in one simple video I would recommend you guys um, leave some comments and then we can definitely talk about those things more right there and that's pretty much going to be it for the video. If you have enjoyed it, then toss it a like and get subscribed. And if you would like to watch some more videos on the channel, then here you go. These are going to be two of my recommendations. And I thank you very much for watching and I'll see you guys hopefully in the next one. Bye-bye.